everybody, I'm Ryan, and uh, most of you already know me if you're watching this on the ALC page, but if not, we're going to go through um, a, uh, just a workflow of running Ableton in Arrangement View. Okay, so our set list is Let Go, Available, and The Blessing. I already have all three of these songs already like customized to the way we like to play them, so in Arrangement View, um, I'll just be able to drag them all three in there. All right, so the song's set. We're going to copy it all and then open up my template. Um, so now, song one, it's going to be 126, so you always change the tempo for your first song right there. And then rename it to Let Go. And it's in C. That way, if for some reason during rehearsal or practice, if the singer's like, oh, uh, can we drop it down a key? I'll know what my starting point is. Like, like, so I always like to label it up here too. So it's 126, I'm gonna drop it in right here. So I copied all of those, I'm just gonna paste them all, boom. Um, let's see let's see how the counting starts, how the service is gonna start. Intro, two, one, two, three, four. So I'd rather it be a quicker countdown, that way y'all can get right into the song, you know? Uh, so we'll just highlight them all, copy them all over. I mean, just drag them all over to where that intro is gonna start right there. Okay, and then now whenever the drummer starts it. Intro, two, three, four. That's right into it, it's easier. Yes, right. Yeah, and you can like either, just to clean up stuff, I'll just trim this at the beginning. So shift select all that, just drag it over to there. Uh, sometimes the settings that you have to. Anyway, that's your first song, and then I group them. The reason I group them is because, um, let's color code them first. The reason I group them is because I want this this a separate channel for the ears. I want these two to be a separate channel for the ears. Click and guide and control them differently. And I want the whole track to be one channel for the ears. Or like for the tracks channel. And then also when I have three songs, I want to be able to control. Like when you go to this view. So this is arrangement view and then this is uh, session view or whatever. It's two different views in Ableton. I run off arrangement view because you can cross dissolve between each song and it works better yeah. for, for live. So you don't have to group them, but I just choose to for organization and for audio purposes. So group the whole thing. So right click and then hit group right there. And then just rename it to what you want it to be. So number one, let go. Okay, now they're grouped. And if I wanted to turn down the whole thing, now it's in this group right here. So I could turn down the whole thing. Gotcha. Yep, so now when I play it, say so I turned it down a whole lot, can't hear it, <laughs> I'll solo it. Super soft, right? So we want it to be the right level, so we'll bring it back up to zero for now. And like basically all three songs need to be level with each other, so you may have to like, you may have to like do them like that, just like, that's why I group them. So anyway, that's how you solo it and all that good stuff too. So now this is looking pretty familiar to you, because you've worked on this before. Number one, so so like I want to like hit number one to start it, number two to start number track number two, and so on. So yeah. that's how you do this. You hit the little key thing and you program uh, this little thing here, and it's already programmed in my template to number one. So if I wanted it to be number two, I'd hit it again and then hit number two. See how I changed it? I gotcha. Now I'll hit two and it'll start. Intro. So, but we want to go back to one. So that's how you program each one to one. The template is basically just like, it saves me a little bit of time every time I do this because it has like a bajillion tracks already in it so I can dump them all in there. Otherwise I'd have to hit Command T for a hundred times and then set the marker for number one. So the template just saves me about like a minute or two. So that's what the template's for. Okay, so that's, and we're gonna save this. Instead of saving, just hit save because that'd be saving over the template. We're gonna say save as, and we're gonna name it something like that. So we'll call it 6, 10, 20. Uh, and I always put the song in the, the key, so let go in the key. That way, if I ever want to go back to the set, I can just find it easily. Uh, let go and see. No, actually, I'll put 180 right here, so I know it's for 180. All right, I'm going to save it to the desktop for now. Okay, next song. 
available in E. I've already made it. So we have songs available in the key of E, right there. Double click it. Um, I always want to check the key and the tempo. So the tempo is 80 for sure. 80, and then uh, the key. Make sure it sounds right. Or double click it to make sure nothing's like not war not not consolidated. If it wasn't consolidated, I'll show you what it would look like. So like, let's just say I changed the key and forgot to consolidate it. So I'm gonna go ahead and warp this with a complex because that's the best sounding type of warp. And then we'll drop it down two half steps. So I just did it on this synth effects track or whatever. So I'm gonna solo it. Probably not the best example because there's no tonality in the synth effects, but let's go back up. It went up a little bit. Okay. So let's just say Command Z that it's back down to negative two. Now this one, if I so the, all these other ones are consolidated, but this one's not. So you, when you double click it, you see this difference here. Instead of like here, you see it yeah. as zero. So that's how I know if something's not consolidated. You'll you'll be able to see it like that. Okay. So I'm gonna just Command Z all that junk. So now it's back to consolidated. So we're gonna copy the whole thing just like the first one. So basically you have a bank of songs and you're just copy, you're just finding the tempo and copying them and dropping them in the, the thing. I'll show you where you gotta like do a little something with the tempos each time the copy. So when we go back to um, this, I wanna rename this because I don't like the word project at the end, it's just a pet peeve and like clean it up. So now next time we open it it'll you can double click it, but for now we've got to rename it. So I don't want to save any of that. I just want to open up this. Okay. So here's a little bit of a trick that you got to learn for tempo stuff. So we're locked in on 126 right now. So if I just drop these in here, say I want to drop them, have this have the click start right here or something. Say I want to drop them in. That's cool. I mean, go ahead and like color them different so it's a different color. But um, what's going to happen? Is no, it's too Intro, fast. Two, three, okay. four. So we need to get the right tempo, right? All right. So let's go ahead and just Command Z the drop in real quick. Um, so I want to find the end of the last click. Just zoom in tight on it. Right here at the bottom where it says Master, we're gonna uh, figure out. We're gonna go from like we need to go from 126 to 80, right? Okay. So. The best way to do it, or the way to do it, like there's different ways of doing it. This is the way someone taught me, and it seems to work really good. So you're just gonna click on like, what's your lowest tempo you're trying to go to right now? 80. 80. Okay, so the lowest left is the lower one, so 80. And then the highest one right now is uh, 126. So there's your two units of tempo. So zoom in tight on that last click. Remember this is the last click of the song. And then it doesn't necessarily, the song doesn't necessarily have to start right here, but the, I want the tempo to change right here. Like the next song doesn't have to start right there on the last click, but I do want the tempo to change right there for the grid. So basically I'm dropping in a grid and now it's going to be at 80. So when I click here, you'll see it changes to 80 because this is affecting anything in the grid above it. Gotcha. Okay, so now I click here, it's back to 126 and so on. So on the last click, we're going to dump it down to 80 because that's the song we want to go to. And then we can figure out where we want it to start, you know? Let's just say I don't want it to start like right on there. I want it to maybe start like a little bit to give it a little breather. Um, we'll just do it like right here. I'm gonna do it right there for now. Go ahead and color those. Just right click and color them to so where you can see the difference. We'll go ahead and put in marker number two and name it available. And then it's gonna be in the key of E. And then Go ahead and like make the key work. Right now it's not gonna work. It's gonna go to one because I programmed it. Two is nothing, right? So we want two to make it work on the keyboard. So two, click it and then hit two, and then click out of it. Um, we want to drag our clicks and our guides to these top three tracks. So grab that, those three, and just drag them here. Now let's see how this sounds. I'm gonna delete these extra ones here. We don't need those now. Let's see how this sounds. Uh, I guess I'll just turn off the clicking guide and just see how it sounds. 
It would be okay as long as the band's kind of hitting with it, you know? It just depends on, like, how the band ends it. So, that's kind of one of those things where you gotta, like, feel how it's gonna feel. I'm gonna delete, I mean, I'm gonna, um... You know how to do all this, so anything you want live in the tracks, you... Yeah. Okay, so what we don't want live, we know, is the main track, right? Right. This, the bottom one's always the main track, right. and I pull that in from iTunes when I make... Because they don't come with lead vocals, so you have to, like, pull it in and line it up and all this crazy stuff. So we're gonna uh, mute the main track. We'll mute all the background vocals. Vocal chops, we're gonna leave those. Those are cool. Background vocal effects, I think we leave those. BGVs, that's where people are actually singing. We're gonna chunk those. Alto, we'll chunk it. Soprano, we'll chunk it. Everything else pretty much stays except for like whatever's gonna be played by a person. Yeah. So we'll take out. I don't know what you guys are doing for guitar now, but I usually just mute electric one until. Just whatever. You can unmute it if you need to. Bass will mute it. If you don't have a bass player, if you don't know what he's doing, you can unmute it. Um, loop, in this case, is pretty much drums, I think, on this song. I don't remember what. I think we leave them and you just play on top of it. I think that's yeah. what we do on this one. Some of them, they're pretty much the exact drum part is just electrified, so I mute it, but this one is actually a lot. I think even whoever's playing, I think we always just leave it in there. Okay, so that's pretty much what they'll hear. It's about normal. Okay. okay, so then what I might do for this... So that's the counting. You see the counting happening? Okay. Um, two, three, four, one, two. Um, Intro, two, three, four. What I'll do is I'll just take out this double count in. I'll just have a single count in because it's not on a pickup. Like the piano line lands on the one. If it's on the pickup, I like to leave a double count in so he can like get his timing and pick it up when he needs to. You see what I'm saying? Like yeah. if you're playing piano, you would want a little bit more of a warning mm -hmm. than just this. If it came in on the two or the three, yeah. you would want. Intro, two, three. Dun, dun, you know, you would want more of a warning. But since it comes in on the one, I think we're good. And we need, it's a little bit too much space unless the band's really killing it at the end and stuff, which this song is kind of a dry ending. So yeah. what we're going to do is we'll just, we'll start it in on the one, on the count in, instead of a double count in. You see what I'm saying? So I'm going to highlight all these. We'll just do that. The word intro, we still need the word intro. Let's see what it says. Intro. Okay, we still got the word intro. And then we'll take these and chop them accordingly, otherwise we'd be off and measure the whole song. So we'll pull those, and then we'll figure out where we want it to start. We're giving ourselves a little more like wiggle room basically right here. So let's just say we want it to start like right there. See how that sounds? So we'll move our little marker to there, move all these to line up. It's like Tetris, you just gotta line them up. <laughs> I think that'll be okay. Let's pull that. You see how I kind of missed some of the pad coming in right there because we chopped off a measure? Yeah. Um, was there a pad sound? Let's hear it. I'm going to mute the main track right now. Go ahead and color code these two. So I'm shift selecting. Boom. Yeah, there's a pad. So, which one is it? You can look at what's coming out. Uh, see these little audio forms? Right? Mm -hmm. I think that's them. Where's it coming from? Right here. Right here. Yeah, that's right. It's this one. So, keys five. <laughs> that's, that's the quickest way to find where it's coming from. All right. So, I like that sound. So, I'm gonna drag it back out to where, however far it'll go. Uh, <laughs> It must just start right there. It starts on that. Okay. 
One other thing I forgot to do. Did you hear the? I'm gonna mute. So I'm gonna go ahead and group these. So I can mute them all in one. So I'm gonna group them. It's number two. And it's called available. Okay. So now let's just mute them so we can hear what this thing. Because th what happens, I warped it on this last beat and it kind of warps the sound a little bit. I'm gonna show you how to fix that. You hear that? It's very subtle. <laughs> You hear it? Yeah. It's warped. It's not supposed to sound like that because I warped the tempo, right? So I'll show you how to fix it. So we don't want the, basically we don't want it to um, sound like that. And it sounded like that because the tempo goes like drastically lower all of a sudden. So to fix it, you double click um, on any kind of sound instrument, which it wouldn't be percussion, it wouldn't be loop, it, wouldn't be, it might be synth sound. I'm going to start it right here so double click it and you get back into your warp settings and all that so then you highlight it about right here and then go down and I'm going to unwarp everything I'm highlighting and then, ooh, see these weren't how's it going kids you all right bro all good Look good up to you yesterday, man. Thank good you. job playing, man. I didn't get a chance to stay at church. Thank look you. Good, you a lot. good stage presence, man. Look real good. Yes, sir. Ryan said he's showing you some things at Ableton, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, good. Just getting some learning. So I think, so maybe I didn't consolidate a couple things. Um, so when I highlighted them all, it wouldn't let me like unwarp them. So I'm going to just start with bass. I think I probably consolidated from bass down to the bottom. So basically, I just want to pick it up before the tempo change somewhere and then unwarp it all the way to the bottom. So we'll start with bass and see if this fixed it. It doesn't have to be like exactly one way or the other, but you want it to be like close to the end. So no, see, it's not. Okay. Hold on. Don't worry about what I'm doing now. It's just kind of confusing. <laughs> I don't know what this one's a little different but don't worry about it I'm about to show you how to fix this sound coming in so we want some sound right here no, it's muted. <laughs> So instead of so abrupt coming in, I want yeah. it to sound a little smoother. It is key five, so what we can do is just copy some of that. We'll copy it from like here. And then paste it like right here. And then like, uh, let's see how that's. Yeah, that's cool. So then we'll just drag it a little bit further and then put a cross design on it. So I highlight the little intersection and then hit cross, right click it and hit cross, cross fade. I've been showing, yeah, yeah, everything else I've been showing is like organization, but it's important to know how to do the tempos. Gotcha. Organizing the stuff is like pretty much what I've showed you so far. This is this is more of the stuff you're probably used to. Okay, so now we're good. It's starting to look really familiar now. So you can open it up and mute what you want. So we'll mute the drums. We'll mute the bass. We'll mute the. Does anybody play the acoustic? Uh, not on that side. Okay. Electric one, maybe? Uh, actually, no, no, no. I take out the acoustic and leave both electrics in. Okay. Piano, mute. Piano two, I think, is. Let's see. Yeah, we'll just leave it because they'll probably be playing this part. Yeah. So we'll leave 
piano two in there. Uh, keys we'll leave on there. So we'll mute the alto, mute the baritone, mute the background vocals, mute the background vocals two, mute the choir, and mute the main track. Okay, so now let's compare volumes between tracks. This could be a last step, like little, 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 little. So trying to compare loud spots to the loud spots. So yeah. let's bring it down a little bit. So don't worry about all these. Watch, see all these colors and stuff. Yeah. Watch, watch this. I'm gonna edit, undo this, but just to show you what all those are. Delete. Okay. Now when you go back to this, you just have your click guide guide song song. So I want to pull down. Let me edit, undo that real quick because <laughs> I need them. I need those as placeholders for now. But um, I'm gonna pull down. A, uh, let go a little bit. So this is like the master volume for let go. So, and you can see what you're doing right here. I would say probably like negative four compared to this one. So now. This one's got a little bit more cut to it, but I think the volume is pretty good. Alright, so that's good. File save. So we're done with the first two songs. Uh, save live set. Okay. And then we're going to open up the last song, The Blessing. So we'll go back to my hard drive. Uh, multi track songs, The Blessing. I think it's under V, maybe. Yeah. Okay. What key is it? Key of A. Um, right here, what's this? Normal intro or vamp intro? So we're gonna go with normal intro. Vamp is like if a greeter came on stage and we're vamping to go into it. I, I customize the intro, just save it so I don't have to double work all the time. So normal intro, so it's pretty much the normal song in A. So, um, cool. Let's make sure. I just spot check it to make sure nothing's warped, like I don't want it to be warped, so it's all yeah. consolidated. Uh, it's missing, so let's see this red, maybe mm -hmm. the files are missing. So what's missing? Nothing. Nothing's actually missing, it just says something's missing. Okay, I'm good with that. Uh, so I'll double check it again. Nothing's warped. Okay, the tempo is 70. And then highlight them all, so just select them all, copy them. Also, let's make sure it's an A. <laughs> Copy, go back to open up recent, and we'll go to uh, what's it called? This 1620 uh, Write down 70 before I forget it. Okay. Now, so then you know what to do? You would bring it down to 70. Yep, so go to the last beat, just always go to the last beat, and we can retime it as needed, but you always want to warp it right at the last beat. Why? I don't know, just because I do that. That way I can butt it up if I want to, you know, yeah. but I don't have to. So it just gives me more options. So I want to zoom in on it. To zoom in, like, you see this little symbol up here? Yeah. See how it's not there now? Mm -hmm. So if you go right there and you click, you can, like, just super simply zoom in, on, like, all the way in. Mm -hmm. It's quicker than, than doing um, the other command is, like, minus. Yeah. Or, uh, what is it, command plus or shift plus? Yeah, shift plus. I just like it better with a mouse. It's simpler. It's quicker. Okay, so the slowest tempo we need right now is 70. Okay, fastest tempo we need right now is the song that was right next to it, right? So 80. So we need like the lowest and highest that we're actually working with because we want, because what happens, let me show you why. So it's just, right now it's at 126 because it was the first song was the highest tempo. Mm -hmm. See? So if I dragged so right here, drag. if I right here, if I drag, I'm just clicking this and it creates that little thing. If I if I want to go, I want to create a little click right here and then right here, I want it to go up to 80. You see how it goes way up to 108? Yeah. And if I try to go to 80, watch what happens. 
it's already taken forever to try to because it's so sensitive so oh 80.93 no that's not what we want go down eight see this is ridiculous you can't so, yeah, you can't get it so you have to like tell it to stop at 80. Gotcha. that's the whole thing so i'm going to delete that and then i want it to stop at 80. okay so we're going from 70 right here no, no, we're going to 70, I'm sorry. But yeah. anyway, we're this is 80, and we want to go to 70. So I'm just clicking here to double check. So 80, this song, number two, is at 80. We want it to go to 70. So I created a little marker right there on the last click. And now when I drag it down, I was just going the wrong way when I was showing you. But when I drag it down, it stops at 70. So if it was like it's some random tempo 58 or something at the lowest, then I try to drop it down to 70. Same thing. I can't. I can't really hit it quickly i'd have to like really see i got it but sometimes it'll snap on like point zero yeah. two and it's just aggravating so the what the best way to do that is do it like this just tell it where to stop this is just a, uh this is an arrangement view thing when you go to session view things are different and workflows different and stuff but you have less control as far as like crosses of them between songs and like opening up a group and muting what you yeah. want like I, I just I was taught in arrangement view, but a lot of people run it in session view. So um, anyway, that's a little that's why I use arrangement view because I want it to sound the best as possible that I can produce. So, okay, so now we got our our stuff. We've already copied it because I opened it up and copied all the tracks for the blessing earlier. So all I gotta do is paste them. <laughs> Should still be there, theoretically. So I want to paste it for now. We'll just drop them like right here and just see how this is gonna sound, which I know it's probably gonna be too long. Okay, so I'm double checking the tempo, 70 here, back to 80. So 70 is good. Um, okay, so let's see how, I'm gonna go ahead and drag my, um, look. sometimes I have two guide tracks and sometimes I don't. This one I don't, I didn't need it. So I'm just gonna copy the first two, the click in the guide to these top two right here. I want them to, to go where I tell them, so on 245. Snap on there. That way it's all lined up. You just want them to line up, you know, for testing sound purposes. Okay, so let's turn off the click and guys are already off. Let's see how this is gonna sound. Go ahead and unmute the main track so we can see what's happening, like the vocals and stuff. Just a long outro, so I need to end it right here. One, yeah. two, three, four. Yeah. Well, we're going to make that ending right now, okay? So I'll gotcha, show you how to gotcha. do that. All right. So that's going to be like ending two, three, four. We want it to resolve, probably. Mm -hmm. Boom. You know, just to make it. If this was the last song in the set, you'd probably want to keep doing what it's doing. But to get to the next song, you want to go ahead and end it. Uh, two. Four. I'll put a marker right here. Okay, we'll fix. Yeah, we'll just work. We'll we'll fix this now. Okay, let's fix this now. That's just something I didn't do when I made the track because, like, what I'll do now is I'll fix this to where it ends on the one, and then I'll copy everything I did and then make a whole new thing in this folder, and I'll just name it. Uh, what song is this? Available. I'll name it like available. Uh, you know, quicker ending. No way, I don't have to redo it because what I'm about to do is going to take me 10 minutes, probably. So I don't have to redo that 10 minutes. I'll just copy gotcha. it and I'll name it uh, Available Quick Ending or whatever. Gotcha. Okay, so let's get to that real quick. Um, so I need the word ending, which is probably going to be right here, right? Yeah. So boom, boom, boom. Ending. Okay, so I'm going to copy ending. Outro. Uh huh. So. I'm Ending. One, two, three, four. See what I'm doing here? Yeah. Ending. Two, three, four. And I already marked it right there, so I know it's going to end there. And then it's probably going to be this note right where. Ending. 
Right on the fourth. Yeah, I could copy all of this too. Let's see. Ending two. Yeah, I think I can just copy this. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Ending. Let me get these out of the way for now. I'm gonna chunk them way over here. And I'm gonna undo this tempo thing so it's not like stretching my music in the wrong way. So I'm gonna just bring this tempo back up. So bring it over. But still wanna get it out of the red basically. Move it way over here. Right there. Now I'm working with the right tempo for all this when I chop it, which will help when you chop and slow. Ending. I think I'm just gonna pull it from right here so I'm gonna copy all of that see how I'm copied all that that yeah. red right there so you can hit copy I right, will just cut it get it out the way get these out the way so I cut it at this right here I think is that what I just did yeah so I cut it on the one of the four count so this is the one of the four count so I'm gonna paste it right here Okay, and then pull this out. Um, the piano was still playing, so I wanted to keep playing a little bit like it was. Maybe put the crosses off. Is it all here? Right? Ending. Okay, and then fade these all the way back out. It doesn't do like a, it didn't really like finish the little phrasing that the piano was playing, but that's just the way it was recorded. So, which is fine. muted the main track because I'm editing something that's not going to sound the same yeah. as that. So like I, I guess when so. you when you solo the main track, what I just edited, this is where the cut's going to be right here. So you're gonna, like the lines change. Yeah, you're going to hear something weird. Now you could put it if you really needed that audio for something like for the practice track, if you want it to sound like a little bit better when people listen to it, or for the, the main mm -hmm. track. You can do it like that. See? That sounds fun. Yeah. Well, we're not really using that audio anyway for the track, so. I guess we can go ahead and put a 2 3 4. Ending 2 3 4. I mean, it's not really necessary. They get the point, right? <laughs> Ending. Ending. Okay. So it holds that note. Keep that in mind. That's the only thing on the chart that I might change. The very ending instead of, because it has like another round of the piano playing. So on the PDF. Um, put short and end. Or just cut out those, that little, uh, like, so the X, where is the chart at? What song is this? Uh, okay. Available. So you go to the chart. Um, let's open up. Well, let's oh, just yeah. look at it. so available outro. So it'd only be one of these. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, and it still hangs on the A, right? Yeah, so you, I mean, it doesn't matter. This isn't a huge deal, but you would just erase one of these, basically. Okay. Uh, so, we want to get into the next song now. So, I'm going to delete this little marker. 
because this is such an easy edit, I don't think I'm gonna redo. I don't think I'm gonna consolidate all this, make a new folder, because that's that was easy. That was super simple. And I'll have to redo it again probably when we play this song. <laughs> so I'm saying that we're probably. Gonna, I'll do it later. I don't, you don't need to see all that right now. I'll do that later. Okay, so boom, boom, because I save all these files anyway, so I can just go back and grab it. Um, the count in. So let's move those here. Move these. Got to get our tempo back. So where's our last click right here? So you click that, and then bring it back down to uh, 70. Make sure it's all at 70, which is got to delete some of these real quick. Just delete these two little keyframes. So we're all we're all back at 70 now, which is the last song tempo. Shift select all these. This has got like a long count in, so we'll see how that sounds. Go ahead and write my marker here. So song three, uh, the blessing. And it's in the key of A. Put our little the key thing there. Okay, so you got to decide what you want to do here with how this transition sound. This is what's actually going to sound like. As of now. Oh, where's the words in that? The, was that just the instrumental outro? Yeah, that was an instrumental. So let's actually hear what the words sound like. <laughs> seems to be a little quicker maybe I mean it all depends on what the worship leaders are doing you know that's the thing I'd say I'd say for this scenario I'd, I'd make it quicker yeah that, generally that's what I do in 180 and stuff if I'm doing something where it's going to be longer I know it's going to be longer in there I'll like talk to the worship leader and tell them what's what's happening because I'd rather not be an awkward moment I'd rather if it if it needs space great but I want people to know that there's space there you know what I'm saying but yeah, I agree with you. So uh, we can do, how's it coming in the piano? It comes in. Right on the one. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just do, we'll just do a one measure count in. Okay. Plus Luke is, is Luke playing? Yeah, he's he's good at one. Like some piano players, they can't catch a measure count. They need, they need the whole two things, you know, but like Luke's yeah. solid and he can do it. So we'll just like bring it in closer and like start it there. Uh, where was it at? It was hitting on 243 right here. So maybe we'll uh, we'll make it hit. I ah, just bring it this way a little bit. So now it's gonna be hitting. Yeah, let's try that. So we'll move the marker there and then drag all these. That's where the markers at. Wait, wait, no, we need to cut a measure out first. It's easier to do it this way because you'll, you'll lose track of what you just did. So cut that out and then cut these out a measure. See that snapping? Yeah. It snaps. Okay, so now it should, now when we move this wherever we want it, let's just move it to like right here. About there. Now these can move to this line. Because you'll forget that you didn't cut a measure out and nothing's going to line up. So you got to make it all match. And I, I warped some of the things that were warped because the tempo on your be song is right here. All down. Also, okay, let me unmute this. I mean, let me mute that because we're hearing notes that they're playing live and we're not going to play. That. The piano should be Thanks. muted, right? The piano, it's not. Okay, so now it should sound cool. Okay, 
it's this piano maybe it's this one let's let's fade that out because piano two will be live in the charts It's still some space there, but I think it's. I mean, I think, if you need more, you know what to do. You yeah. just drag it. You could probably drag it to the 241 or whatever, you know, make it quicker. Okay. So I'm gonna close that up. Delete these extra little tracks here we don't need. Delete all the ones under it. Yeah, that's a good transition. Color code these. Shift select. Acoustic or no? Uh, I'll take it out for now. I'll put it back in if we need it. Okay, the electrics leave them. Or you want electric one? Leave both electrics in. Okay, uh, piano mute. Background vocals mute. Two mute, choir mute, main track mute. This thing probably shut down. Yeah, 30 minute record loop. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Okay, see how these orange things, these are the tempo markers? Yeah. So when the set's pretty much finished, I like to see the orange just because I like to see it. So I'll go back to the, what tempo is it? 126. So the highest tempo is 126. Now you see it. <laughs> you see them all. So the lowest tempo is 70. You can spot check them. 70, click in here, 80. Because you don't want wrong tempos. Those sound weird. Okay, so all my keys are programmed, one, two, three. All my tracks are about to be level. Let's listen to it. Blessing's a little softer, right? Blessing one decibel. I'm gonna bring this one down another two, and I think we'll be set. So let go, bring it down another two, and bring the blessing up one, and I think we should be about ready. Right. but you can like finagle it a little bit so now they should all yeah, they should all be pretty level so we got negative six negative two neg uh, plus two and that's just kind of what it needed for this set particular because they're not all balanced perfectly <laughs> After it goes through the bridge and it goes back into an ah min, and then it goes back into the bridge loud. Yeah, let's After look at the that. chart. So the chart, the way it's set out, um, what's this song called? Blessing. The blessing. The, where's the, right there. And this is in the key of uh, A. 
key of A. That's what we normally do it in. So this is with the normal intro. Okay. So yeah, at the at the end of the song is that we're talking about. Yeah. So it, it starts. It does the four bridges back to back. It starts with a interlude. May his favor be upon. So bridge one four times. May his favor four times, right? Yeah. And then it goes into bridge two. May his presence. And then it goes into bridge three. In the morning, in the evening, and then it goes to the refrain. So how long of a morning. how long of a set list do we have as of right now? Right now we are starting. Not about 16 minutes. 16 minutes? Okay, so then that means that we... That's... 16 minutes and 20 seconds is where it's at. You got a few longer songs than normal today. What I would probably recommend is just like, if y'all really want to go back into something right here, just play all these three songs straight through and then just have this click. Just start Just start the click by itself right here and just let it roll. All right. you know, there are ways to like put a little uh, cue somewhere. Like a. Uh, what I usually do is like, Say if I wanted to go back into something and I knew what it, what it would be, I would just like copy all this and then paste it over here and just have like a fade in for the actual track, what people hear, but the count and counts you in and the drummer just hits it, you know. That's how, and I right. may put a pad underneath. I think for now, uh, yeah, just loop that click. I don't want to go in, I don't want to put anything like. That way you go where you want to go. Yeah, not only is, since this is already a, a longer set list, uh, I, don't even, I don't even know the locator there. So it'll sound like. much washout, you know, just say it is, say you want less washout, um, this is how you do that, so you click this, and you go to mixer, and then you go to, uh, instead of track volume, you go to like, yeah, you go to track volume, that's it actually, then you just put your little keyframe where you want it. since we don't have a this little we have one loop thing we have one thing that'll let you loop right that's all they give you so since we are, we're not using it we can just drop it right here and just cut this a little shorter you know. and if you come back up at the end you can just click it right there solo the click click it and it'll start looping where you want it to you know so i'm just trying to make it to where like when you look at it as a whole it's not like it doesn't look like four songs it looks more like three and you can like see things better so now you see things better because yeah. if you drag this out like a mile or however long it is yeah then you see things a little less clear you see what i'm saying yeah i guess so let's just leave it to like that and then it'll refresh and then so it'll actually let's just make it easy let's put it like psh, right there and put this loop just make sure it sounds right and that's it these clicks are easy to loop because they don't have, this. just two sounds. So when it loops, this is the loop enabler. And if 
you want it to like, you know, program a loop and then just let it keep looping and then you're about to go into something, you can just hit this thing and go into it. So that's, that's kind of cool. Also, if you ever wanted to like mark a section, like when the songs, I'm going to save this, I'm going to hit file, click all and save. That's going to collect everything. That way I can drop it on a hard drive and it's not looking for it on this hard drive. It's like putting everything in there. So it'll be like a four gig file instead of a, right now without collecting it at all, it's probably just like a, you know, a few megabytes. But then now it's going to take all those WAV files and save.